Hey everybody, Zach Fowler and YGO back with a Light Sworn deck profile. Um, this is from the Rarity Collection 2 Celebration Tournament. Uh, it was pretty fun. I went 5-0, um, which, you know, isn't anything crazy. But there was some interest in the deck list and it was a lot of fun. So I just wanted to show you all what I played. And we'll just go over kind of, I think, the direction the deck is going for a while. Um, the mat's super cool. The deck was super fun and the tournament was fun in general too. It was nice to play a deck that wasn't, like, the the de facto best deck for a while. Um, but yeah, so we'll just kind of jump right into it, and I'll explain the choices. So, like I said, I played Light Sworn, uh, and first up we have the three Light Sworn Dragonling. Uh, this is a Armageddon Knight for Light Sworn Monsters if you have a Light Sworn Monster in Grave and it's Special Summoned, which is really cool. And when it goes to the graveyard, it can search for a Judgment Dragon or Punishment Dragon. Uh, then we have three Vice Light Sworn Archfiend. Uh, this card is crazy. This is actually my favorite Light Sworn of the new ones. What it does is, if it's in your hand, you can return another Light Sworn card from your hand to the top of the deck. Special Summon this and Mill 2. Um, it only got ashed a couple times, but um, just having a way to put Wolf and Valise back into your deck is obviously very good. And then we have, speaking of those monsters, we have the Three Wolf, Lightsworn Beast, and two Felice, Lightsworn Archer. The reason for the 3 2 split was specifically because I wanted to minimize the amount of times I would see additional copies of these in my hand. And with five copies total, um, it just brings it to about 50%. Um, the deck was 43 cards. Um, and the replacement for the third Felice was actually a singular Raiden. The reason for this uh, as well was because I wanted to make sure I had a searchable normal summon that was proactive with Charge of Light Brigade. Um, and I felt like Raiden was the only one that did something like that. Initially, I'd been playing Gareth, Lights One Warrior, and Gareth is really good. Um, you know, what. It lets you just mill so many more cards in your deck because let's say you even open up with like Garrus and the ability to summon Vice, you're going to mill two there. And then if you make Minerva, uh, Athenian Lightsworn, the Synchro, that's an ad additional two mills off of her initial effect through the Garrus. And then when you banish to mill for her effect again, you mill again off of Garrus. But the problem that I ran into was um, A, you would end up over milling, which sounds counterintuitive because that's what you want to do. You want to see as much of your deck as you can. But you would see, uh, you would mill too many important cards. But also, uh, it led to really greedy plays, where in order to maximize the efficiency of Gareth, you would need to play as aggressively as possible and kind of just disrespect the Im the impact of cards like Nibiru, um, Ash Blossom, Warner, Valor, things like that. Um, and it would lead to really risky lines that you just could otherwise avoid taking. So we, I ended up cutting the Gareth for that reason. Uh, the one Raiden was pretty solid, though, just to have is like, again, just a random monster. And there were a few times where uh, I just had to normal summon the Raiden and hope that I got, like, a lighter or a dark engrave for Bistial or something like that. It was really solid. Um, and then another reason for the two Felice as well is because Felice is significantly worse than Wolf in that it has to be sent by a monster effect. So if you hit it with charge or recharge, that is not going to work, which does come up more often than you would like it to. But they were very solid overall. Um, and then to support that, um, there's the one Punishment Dragon. Uh, initially, I was also playing Judgment Dragon. However, I found that Judgment Dragon kept being kind of just like a, a random body. And I wasn't really a big fan of that initially. Um, although, I think going forward, it may be appropriate to play it again. It's also a good going second option, which is important. However, Punishment Dragon is the more powerful of the two in that being able to put back Banished and Engrave cards is very good. Um, against my Snake Eye opponent, I used it to put back uh, all the cards in the Graveyard and the Banished pile, which meant that their Flamers Dragon couldn't get back the level ones when it died, which was really impactful. Um, also, Punishment Dragon makes it so that way, if you do get to go through your whole initial turn, the following turn will actually have the ability to continue playing because you've refreshed your deck. And now that your Light Sworn cards are no longer in your deck, all that's left are just like the most powerful cards in your deck that are there to support the already good Light Sworn effects. So this was really good. 
Um, and then I played the three Solar Recharge and the three Charge Light Brigade. Um, charge is insane. I don't think I really need to explain that. A Rota that uh, mills three is just ridiculous. Um, recharge was a card I was kind of torn on. There was a while where I wasn't playing anything. Uh, there was a bit where I was testing a Lure of Darkness. But I ended up settling on Solar Recharge because even though the odds of seeing a Light Sworn or a Dark were about the same, uh, because of Charge, it pushed you higher into the Light Sworn count. Uh, the Light Sworn cards also just meant that I could loot my Graveyard more, which I found to be more beneficial even though Allure was basically a free draw to because banishing cards didn't really matter. Um... And the biggest thing, though, was that Recharge could get the Felice and Wolves out of my hand if I didn't see Vice. Um, also, it meant that with the three Vice and the three Charge, um, it meant that between these six and then the three Vice, it gave me nine cards to pair with Felice and Wolf as opposed to just six. And I wanted to increase the percentages to see those together. So that was really good. <coughs> Uh, then the next engine was the horse engine. I played three M City, one Happy, and two King Sark. Uh, these were cards I was very torn on. Uh, actually, even the night before when I was talking with my friends, um, cause we're all just playing silly decks like this right now. Um, I had mentioned that the horse cards are when they work, like they're just like the best cards in your deck. Um, but unfortunately, they are oftentimes the worst cards in your deck, um, and that they're just kind of there. Uh, however, they performed very well for me. Um, playing through Drolls and things like that was very big. Um, and m City being a dark was very important. Um, also, there's a... There are lines that you can do in, like, other versions that would make the horse cards better, where, like, m City being a spellcaster is particularly nice, where, like, if you play Selene or even uh, Secret Village, um, which is something I would actually really heavily consider doing. But these are very good, um, but if you don't have them, like, the deck is still very playable. You can definitely cut them. They were cards that I frequently have wanted to take out of the deck for other options, for, like, more Chaos cards or things like that. Uh, then I played the Bistial Package. I played three Lubellion, uh, one Magnemet, one Sarnir, Jerusalem, Baldrake, and Regain. So the Bistials were probably just the best extenders possible because they're the, like the dragons, they're level six. Um, Regained is just such a crazy card. Like this card just shouldn't <laughs> be a thing. Um, and if you've been a fan of the channel for a while, you've seen that I've played a lot of Bistial Synchro decks. I played like Bistial Synchron, um, Bistial Sprite, um, and in every single one of those decks, Regained is like front and center of those decks. So I'm not surprised to see that it overperformed here again. Um, initially I wasn't playing Sarnir in the deck, however, I found that on turn zero, having Sarnir was more important than, um, I had given it credit for previously just to get Lubellion access. Um, and these being dragons was really good, because this is really just more of a dragon deck, it's like a dragon lightsworn deck than anything. Um, but these were very good, giving you the ability to, um, uh, banish your lightsworn names if needed. For Punishment Dragon, um, they let you set up uh, Chaos Emperor, and we're just really good, like, non-engine cards in general. Um, really happy I played them. And then I did play more Chaos Dragons. I played two Saferts, um, one White Dragon, one Black Dragon, uh, Levineer, uh, Chaos Emperor, and, oops, that's the wrong one, and uh, Chaos Base. So... The Chaos Engine was very good. Um, the Baby Dragons were cards that I still am not too sold on. They're obviously very good, uh, being able to search each other out. But they were frequently... Uh, I would mill one or the other and then just kind of be stuck with the one that I had in hand, which was unfortunate. Um, but just having the free level 4 body was really good. Uh, so, I mean, these were fine. Um... These five, though, are definitely worth talking about more. Like, I could see I could see a world where I cut these, honestly. But these five were really good. Safer in particular was very good. Uh, and there was a reason why I only played two, and it was because of the three recharge. Um, because uh, I counted recharge basically as a normal summon when it came to Safer. 
um, because of Raiden. So you had five and then six with the recharge or with the, the Raiden itself. Um, so I didn't want to clog on too many of those. Even though you rarely normal summon Raiden, I just wanted to have that be there um, n as noted. Uh, even though you're, like, your normal summon doesn't really matter in this deck that much. Um, I just didn't want to clog on like having like safer and charge and then like have to pick between them. Generally though, it's almost always going to be safer as your normal summon, especially because um, if you open up safer and charge, what you can do is you can charge for dragonling and then normal summon safer, activate safer, discarding the dragonling if you didn't mill a light sworn, and then you add another dragonling. And then from there, the Dragonling and Graveyard will trigger to add Punishment Dragon. And then you can also special summon the Dragonling that you just added to hand because you have a Light Sworn in Grave, which was really cool. Um, and then Levineer was obviously insane for hand ripping, um, but it was actually primarily used for its Monster Reborn effect. Uh, I found that Minerva, the Synchro, was getting negated quite a bit. So what would end up happening is that I wouldn't have access to enough banished names. So I would use Cast Dragon Limineer to banish more names to get the ability to summon my Punishment Dragon. Um, and then the Emperor really only came up as a way to recycle cards um, and just kind of be like a, a follow-up threat. I rarely summoned it. I think I only summoned it twice. Um, drew it a whole bunch, but um, only summoned it twice. And the coolest thing I did was I banished Dragon Lang and then summoned Punishment Dragon. Used this. Uh, in the scale, and then put the Dragon Link back in my hand, so that way I could uh, have a follow-up for next turn. And then Chaos Base is obviously just Chaos Base, which is just a broken card. Um, and then I played two, two Triple Tactics Talent and a Foolish Burial as the last three cards of my deck. Um, Foolish was... I, I don't know. It, it never came up, so I can't really speak to it. Um, it's not generally a card I want to play. I could see myself cutting it for some other engine card or even just a third Talents. Uh, Talents was the only non-engine I played in the main deck. And the idea being that if I'm going first um, and you hand trap me, then I can hit another card in your hand. And between the Omega and Livianir, maybe I can hit four cards. And if I'm going second, it's going to be the board breaker of choice. Uh, Talents overperformed. Big time, and Foolish was just supposed to be like an, another kind of like soft starter, but it didn't really come up. So that was the main deck. It was 43 cards. Uh, I was very happy with everything. Uh, just a couple of changes I think I might make going forward, but we'll see. Um, extra deck, we'll start off with the Synchros. So you have Chaos Angel. Um, this is actually a card I think that really overperformed, and I think that doesn't get enough credit in this deck particularly the uh, effect that it gains if it was Synchro Summon using a light monster, where your Synchro monsters are unaffected by the activated effects of your opponent's monsters. The reason for that being that um, if you look at the hand traps that are played, uh, you've got uh, Ash, Valor, Mourner, and Nibiru. All is very common. So that's a lot of ways that your key Synchros like Minerva aren't going to resolve. And if you can make Chaos Angel early, it just makes it a lot harder for them to interact with Minerva, which is a very like a big choke point a lot of the times. Um, if your if your hand is uh, weak, the Minerva can be really important. So having the Chaos Angel was really good. Also, just being able to stop your monsters dying by battle is really important into Ten Pi because then they have to use a spell or trap based board breaker to get past this, um, and that can be pretty difficult. So I was really happy I played Angel. I had actually talked about cutting it for like Chang'e or something and I ended up just not doing that. Um, and then Dispatter. Um, Dispatter's just broken, like the card just shouldn't be a thing. So uh, Omega for the hand rip. Um, I think I only did it like once or twice. I didn't do the full hand loop except for one time in the last few tournaments. Um, it almost never happens, but it's just there to have, and um, one cool thing that came up was I summoned Omega, and then um, I just overlaid with it into a rank 8, uh, just to recycle cards, um, which is really cool. And it's a quarter century now, which is awesome, because it's much deserved. Um, Minerva the Athenian Lightsworn, this card is crazy. Uh, if you don't know what it does, uh, it takes a tuner and a non-tuner, and then on summon, you can Foolish Burial... Uh, Lightsworn monsters of different types 
up to the number of lights when monsters used for its synchro summon. So you're generally going to do two, um, and it's important to note that you can't like send like Felice and Wolf because they're both Beast Warriors, but you can send like Vice and Raiden, or uh, Vice and Felice if you wanted, or uh, Dragonling and something else. Um, so that's going to be two names plus the two that you just used as a synchro summon. And then you can banish up to four Lightsworn monsters from your graveyard during your turn to mill for uh, up to that number of cards. So it can single-handedly set up a full punishment dragon summon, which is really cool. And then if you do that, then you can pivot into rank eights, which is really cool. This card is very good. It also stops your Lightsworn monsters from being banished by card effects uh, while on the field. That part doesn't really matter, but it's cool. Um, and then Scarlight, this was, uh, just for going second, um, uh, the time application is obviously there as well, um, but it was really just to be a, um, a board breaker going second, and a way to turn two Lightsworn monsters, like, into a dragon for Lubellion. So, let's say you opened up, like, Wolf Vice and you summon the vice, you mill the wolf, and you mill Lubellion or something, and you needed to get to Lubellion, um, you can then synchro into this, and then uh, attribute this for the Lubellion, um, because it's a dark dragon, and then you get to continue playing that way. Um, it sounds really niche, but it does come up, and it's weird that it does, so I just liked having that in there. So that was the synchros. Uh, for the Xyz, you have one uh, rank 4 Minerva, this card, I think, is a, another kind of undervalued card. It's a, it's a, it's a little weak, um, but it its applications do come up. Um, you can detach and mill three, and then for every Lightsworn you mill, you draw a card. Um, and with, when you're playing uh, 12 plus Lightsworn monsters and 45 or less cards, you're going to mill a, a Lightsworn almost every time. So you get a couple of free draws. Um, and then when it's destroyed, you can mill three, and for every Lightsworn you mill, you can pop a card non-targeting, which is really cool. Um... That only came up once or twice, but yeah. And then I played Baguska as my other rank four. This was a card um, I had just put in a couple of days ago because I found that when I was getting uh, shifted or um, my lines were getting interrupted too much, I didn't have a way to end on anything that could give me another turn. So by playing Baguska, that just gave you something to have a turn or potentially two. Um, and I was really happy I played it. It's mostly just for Shifter, though. Um, and then I played Zombie Vampire. Uh, this is a card I probably will continue playing, but I am not a big fan of. Um, it almost never resolves, but it's cool. Um, unfortunately, it loses to Ash, Imperm, Valor, Mourner, uh, and Bell. So it loses to even more Hand Traps because they go to the graveyard first and then you special summon from the graveyard, which is unfortunate, but... Um, it's really cool, uh, when it does work. And then you have, uh, I played number 38 as my other rank 8. Uh, this could this was Photon Lord for a while, um, but I wanted to have 38 instead because it, really, the only things that I care about are spells, and I wanted to be able to set up, like, spheres or IP and have that be protected. And so this kind of gave me the the ability to do both. Um, and it also being a dragon was important. Um, just in case I needed, like, if I needed to turn, let's say, like, dragon lane plus two horse monsters into a um, spheres or something. Like, it, it just, it, it was another, like, way to layer in interaction. Um, and I, I know, like, a lot of that sounds really niche, but it's important to, have, to note the, when those things do come up. Um, so you have them for the future. Uh, and then there's Striker Dragon. Um, this was primarily actually to turn um, Safer into a one card SP or a one card um, Heretic Seal. And the way that that would work is that you would um, summon your Safer, um, activate its effect, grab Black Dragon, and then you'd summon Black Dragon, banishing the Safer, obviously. Link into Striker Dragon, grab White Dragon, and then you'd summon the White Dragon, and then you can either go into SP and have a Banish, or go into uh, Heretic Seal if, like, your hand is really bad and you don't think you're going to get anywhere. Um, that is just something that I liked a lot. Um, otherwise, I think I would have cut this, but I liked having the ability to turn one card into 
uh, multiple viable options. Uh, and there's the one SP. It doesn't come up almost ever in the stack. Um, it's actually usually in the way. Previously, I would use this to clear my own cards, where I would like summon this and then banish itself just so I could get rid of two bodies um, and continue to play. But um, I wasn't going as crazy with the combos this time, so it didn't really come up that much. Um, IP, this card came up a whole bunch. Um, and then Seals, again, also came up a lot. Um, between like the Livianeers, the Chaos Dragons, um, the Punishment Dragon, and things like that, and even Dragon Lane, like you just have so many dragons that you can just throw into this that you're almost always going to end with this if you get to do most of your combo. And then I played Appalooza, um, just as like the a big insurance policy. It doesn't come up that much in the stack. Um, and then I played, this card also overperformed as Underworld Goddess of so the Closed World. This was something that I put in um, after playing against Pearly and playing into Snake Eyes. I just kept finding that I needed a way to clear uh, more problem cards. And Underworld Goddess definitely let you do that. And also being able to negate um, Graveyard Recursion effects is really good. And there aren't that many cards right now that target um, proactively. They're usually they're very reactive, so uh, this card is very hard for a lot of players to out. And, of course, um, with how many free bodies you're getting in the deck, you can just kind of throw stuff at them and then use that to link off. And that came up a few times. Uh, for the side deck, I sided three, Radian, uh, the multi-dimensional Kaiju. This was originally going to be uh, the Lava Golds. Um, so actually going back further, uh, initially this was uh, Nibiru, and I was also saying Ash Blossom, and then I switched to Lava Golem because I wanted a Board Breaker, um, because I don't really like playing Hand Traps in a deck like this, where you're trying to have, like, like going second, you're gonna ha you're going to acknowledge that most of your deck probably just isn't going to do anything. Um, like, you're not going to be able to play a bunch of Hand Traps. So at that point, I figured I might as well just lean into the board breakers, and I was playing Lava Golem because I figured that I can hit, you know, multiple monsters, and then um, you don't really need your normal summon anyway, so who cares? Uh, Lava Golem was terrible, so um, I thought about it a little bit, and I went with Radian. Um, and Radian was because uh, it's a dark, which is important for the Chaos cards. Um, it's got good stats. Um, and in, like, the craziest world, and I think it came up, like, once, I had, like, I, I, ra I gave them Radian, I special summoned it myself, and then I managed to make a, um, zombie vampire and activate its effect, and I hit, like, an Ash Blossom, and I got to synchro summon. Um, that's, like, never gonna happen, though. Um, but it was just that it was a level 7, um, for that, if that came up, but it was also just a 2800 attack, um, dark. Because if you went with the lights, you'd have Jizikiru or Thunder King, and those are both way too large. Um, so this is the only one that fits basically every category I want, and I can still run over it. Because it, there was also a world where these were going to be Gamma Seals, but yeah. Uh, then I played Duster and Two Lightning Storm for um, more board breakers. Again, going second, I just want to be able to play and rip apart the board as much as I can, so... Um, cards that prevent that don't really make that so much sense when I'm just trying to play through their engine because my deck is basically all gas. Um, so that's what these were for. And I don't play enough spells and stuff to really make like worrying about anti-spell worth it. Um, I only play a few and I'm usually citing out of like recharges and stuff. So these were very solid. Um, and then I played uh, two Book of Eclipse and Call by the Grave. Um, Call by the Grave is a card I don't actually really like in, uh, I mean, almost ever, honestly, but especially in a deck like this where I'm more likely to mill it than anything. But I figured, like, at worst case scenario, if I did draw it, it was going to be a live card. Um, Book of Eclipse was just there to hit Voiceless Voice and potentially Pearly, um, or, you know, just like those kind of more random decks. Um, it never came up, but it's a card I, I frequently end up going back to. These could be anything. Um, but I just wanted, like, a wide application card. And the other thing, too, was that I wanted quick plays, um, just to be able to hit stuff outside of the main phase. And then I played, the main part of my side deck was, uh, three skill drain. Um, 
again, a very common theme when I play Bistial Synchro decks is that I end up citing uh, Skill Drain because at worst, your cards are just big. Um, and even the Lights Run cards, like, they're just big. Uh, Wolf being a 2100 beater, uh, Raiden being 17, and then, like, Punishment Dragon being a 3000 free body is just huge. Um, and then you have the Bistials, which are all 25. Um, so these were really good. Uh, this makes it so the Tenpai matchup is a lot more favorable. Um, it obviously is really good into Snake Eye, uh, into Melodious decks, um, just kind of everything. It's one of those cards that I, I found going first I would almost always side into. And then I cited two D-Barrier and an Anti-Spell. Uh, the reason for the two D-Barrier uh, was that I cut the third one for the Anti-Spell um, because I wanted to have either uh, four cards for some decks or uh, five cards together as well. Um, and never more than six. Um, so these were like my six going first cards, which is a lot. I don't generally like to side uh, a lot of going first cards, but I figured between um, like all the hand traps that were going to be maining and then they'll probably be siding more, I'm almost never going to get my full combo off going first in games two and three. So I wanted to have a higher chance to see like one of these really powerful cards and they were very good. So, yeah, that was the deck. Um, like I said, it was just a five-round local, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, let me know if you have any questions down below, and I'd be happy to answer them. And if you want to pick up any of the cards, make sure to check out the affiliate link in the description below. And have a great, great day, guys.